yes, they raised some salient questions about how the police responded when that protest was going on, and then how the police also responded when the killing was going on. But we'll play that report for you in just a moment. But before we do that, I'd like you to comment on this, if you will. Some time ago, uh, some years ago, while uh, in those days, as they say, while we went to school, remember that police had CID among students such that before any of these kind of things happen, you already pick up the suspected persons or those who will be referred to as the arrowheads of the planned protest or planned attack or planned anything that they were to do at the time. But these days, how come that they don't have that same kind of scenario playing itself out? Because if you had informants among that crowd, among the students, among the community, this could have been prevented. I, I, I think we must not make mistake of, of mixing these things together. As I speak to you, we still have a very strong and a very effective um, um, intelligence unit. And these intelli intelligence units consist of um, undercover operators, undercover operatives that are deployed to so many sensitive areas and flashpoints. Now, you must remember that what happened, to, uh, what happened in Alu was a spontaneous, what, what, what perhaps poets we call a spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions. It was, it was instantaneous. It wasn't something that was planned. It, there, there, was, there was no timing, there was no time for people to meet and plan and strategize. Uh, perhaps you may begin to blame the community that actually kept so quiet from the time the alarm was raised and the boys were arrested and they were taken, I, I was told they were taken perhaps to the house of one or two persons. Within those periods, those were the time that civic-minded Nigerians ought to have called us. A, a situation where people wait until crisis has gone to a point of consuming people before they begin to put calls across to the police does not show a nation where citizens are indeed effectively and patriotically discharging their civic responsibilities. Well, the These are the points we must make. We, 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 we are not saying the Nigerian police force is a collection of angels. Absolutely no. We are not saying we are superhumans. We are absolutely not saying no. We are not saying we are infallible. We are never said so. We never claim that. We are mere mortals. And we do, we do make mistakes. We have our shortcomings. We have our challenges. But in the midst of all this, we are giving our best. We are doing everything possible. And we need to know that this tax of making Nigeria a safe and secure place is a tax for all of us. The, what played this out there is simply the mosaic law, teeth for tat. Somebody just raised an alarm. People do not have an a, a, a opportunity or even, of even interrogating the boys, and they join in the frenzy. But like Gandhi said many years ago, an eye for an eye, perhaps we make the whole world blind. And these are the things we must begin to work together to de-emphasize. I am saying that the, 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 the tendency for people to just quickly throw up blames, we, 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 must, we must move away from that and begin to look at issues realistically and see how we can work collectively to Mr. put Mr. an end to Mr. some Mr. of these challenges. As realistic as we all want to be, you said there were two policemen returning from work. One was frolicking, doing his own thing, but the other policeman went in to plead. Did that policeman, if the elders of the community did not remember to call, the very professional policeman, did he call you? Did he call any of his colleagues he, to come in and help? Or he just pleaded and then moved to one side? He... From all the facts available to me, one of the police officers pleaded, not just pleading, did everything he can do to get the suspect rescued. 
Remember, they also arrived that place late because they were just on their way from work and they saw a crowd and they decided to stop. One was patriotic and professional enough to intervene positively. The other joined the frenzy. And like I said, when he tried and he could not succeed on his own, he did call uh, the Isiopo police station. And he called and policemen arrived. The first set of people arrived. But of course, by the time they arrived, things has really, really gone bad. And the point I'm trying to make is what played itself out there is just what happens in everyday life. In all our sectors, whether you are talking of the uh, oil and gas sector, you have people who are playing by the rules. You have a few other people who are undermining the operation. In, 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 if go even to our market. You see market women who want to measure a mudu of gari for you using the back of, of, of the cup rather than putting it through the top, rather than putting it through the, 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 the real side. You, you go to our pharmaceutical shops, you see those who intentionally sell fake drugs. But here, there are, there, are, there are genuine pharmacies who are toiling day and night to make sure that lives are saved. You go to journalism at the same time, there are, there are professional journalists who are ready to lay down their lives for this country. Of course, there are, there are, there are also a bunch of charlatans out there who are doing everything to wreck and, and, pull down, and pull down the profession. Exactly that was what played itself out. Even if you go to our political and national life, there are politicians who are ready to pull down their life to make this country great again. Yet there are still some who have no, their stock in trade is to just cause trouble and, and, right. and, and engage in all kind of unethical conduct. Mr. Frank, let, let's play this report for you because the students thereafter uh, hit the streets trying to protest. Well, even though they shouldn't have taken the laws into their hands also by uh, burning or destroying uh, property, but they did raise some point. What's the end of that report, which I'd like you to pay attention to and respond to after that. But for now, take a look at this report. I remember who can Following the recent killings of four students of the University of Port Harcourt, the authorities of the university have closed down the institution indefinitely until the issues are resolved. An action taken to guarantee the safety of the students in the community. With the closure of the school, students were seen on the streets with their luggage at night, leaving the community. The indigents of Umoi Kiri'alo community where the incident took place have, however, dissociated themselves from the murder of the students. My community law is not happy with what has happened. And we're expressing anger, we're expressing disappointment over what has happened and over the University of Podako students that also took laws maybe in protest of the mother students to come into our community and then destroy our properties and burn down and raise down houses. A paramount ruler has been arrested. If he has made his own statement, he should be allowed to come home. But the students are insisting that the appropriate authorities must fish out those who carried out the killings. Our agitations are this. Why is it that we have Nigerian police force in River State and in the said local government where the whole thing happened? And they are not telling us that inexperienced vigilante overpowered Nigeria police. Is it possible? No. Secondly, while the whole thing was going on, they spent more than four hours. Nigeria police were nowhere to be found. But today we came here to do protests, a peaceful one. We did not spend up to 30 minutes with saw Nigeria police everywhere. They also condemned the vandalism of their properties by the students during the solidarity protest. 